What's up Beam Drive and TFC community? Nick here from Ottawa and I wanted to do a short little video talking about heel striking. So this is going to be related to the movement of running. So all you runners out there, hopefully this can help to clarify some, uh, some of the confusion around heel striking because I get a ton of questions about it and there seems to be confusion about heel striking. So what I'd like to talk about today is what is heel striking? Uh, why is it an inefficient and injury promoting way of running? Why do we heel strike and how can you move away from the heel striking running pattern? So heel striking essentially describes a way of running whereby your heel is the first part of your body to interact with the ground. Typically it coincides with an overstride where your foot is landing far in front of your body um, and humans are not adapted to run that way. I don't know if you've ever tried jumping off something off of a surface to something very hard, but if you land heel first, it really doesn't feel very good, right? You don't do it very much because it really hurts. And the, and the pain that you get by trying to absorb a huge amount of impact force with an area that has no ability to absorb impact, AKA your heel bone, uh, is the indicator that you shouldn't be doing that. And so it's self-limiting, which means that your body immediately reminds you that is not a good way of moving. Now running uh, with a heel strike really only was made possible once we started padding the heels of running shoes. And that did two things. Number one, the elevated heel actually made it so that your heel was more likely to intera interact with the ground first because it's actually higher and more elevated. And number two, it eliminated that pain signal of your heel slamming into the ground, right? By essentially giving you a little bit of cushioning. Now a lot of people will look at that cushioning and think that that's cushioning their impact but really all you're doing is cushioning your heel and allowing the rest of your body to interact with the ground in a way that is not very good at absorbing those impact forces. So you've essentially taken the impact force from your heel and transferred that to the rest of your skeleton upstream because your body doesn't have to be efficient at absorbing that impact anymore. Now, when you heel strike, so number one, it's only possible really with heel cushion footwear. People immediately start to run much lighter and with a much more forefoot oriented strike uh, from my past experience when you remove the heel cushioning. So if you get someone to run on a really hard surface, uh, they will not heel strike. They'll shorten their stride, they'll increase their cadence, um, and they'll start to reorient themselves towards a natural way of running, the way that humans um, are adapted to run. Right? People run in a lot of different ways, there's a broad spectrum. Um, but there's really only one blueprint to how we run most efficiently based on how our biology is built, right? We have these Achilles tendons that are these giant elastic bands that are designed to protect our joints from damage when we interact with the ground with running. Uh, but not only that, but actually store that energy and re-release it passively. So the more energy you can reutilize from your elastic tissues, um, the less energy you have to create with your muscles to propel you forward. So heel striking is unnatural, it's inefficient, right? Um, you're basically, you know, if Barney Rubbles from the Flintstone wanted to brake, put the brakes on in his car, he would dig his heels into the ground, right? You're, you're essentially putting the brakes on when you run with the heel strike. Um, and so you're making running much more effortful and harder on yourself. And it's only possible because of heel cushion footwear. So when it comes to running, the goal is efficient running. And efficient running essentially means using the body parts that you were given in a way that is intended and gives you the most efficiency, right? The least energy usage for the biggest amount of ground covered with the highest speed, right? And the thing about efficient running is you don't really have to have the performance conversation and the injury prevention conversation separately because efficient running really includes both of those things. If you run efficiently, you're going to significantly reduce your likelihood of injury because you're using the right parts for the right jobs. So you're way less likely to overuse certain parts. Um, but you're also going to conserve energy and allow yourself to achieve the best performance, um, both in terms of running speed and, and endurance. So a really easy way to start to remove yourself away from the heel striking pattern is actually to go for a run on a hard surface with no shoes on. Now you're not gonna be able to do this for very long, because it's gonna be a completely novel pattern um, of, of how your body has to adapt, right? It's self-limiting. You're not gonna be allowed to heel strike. It's gonna feel really weird. And the weirder it feels, I would say, um, the more disconnected you've become from the natural running technique. Because running is really just a series of uh, catching ourselves during a fall. And um, instead of overreaching in front of us. Now, I think 
when it comes to heel striking, it coincides with overstriding. And I think when our front, the front of our hips get tight, we lose the ability to explore the back part of the pendulum and we're more likely to swing further forward. So I'll probably end up having to do more videos on heel striking, but just know that heel striking means landing with your heel first. It's really only possible when you put a massive pillow under your heel. It's extremely inefficient. I don't care what runner heel strikes, they would be more efficient if they didn't heel strike, even if they're at the elite level. And the easiest way to experiment with escaping heel striking is going to natural footwear that doesn't have cushioning or using or doing some accessory training and running on hard surfaces with no shoes on to see how it feels. Hopefully that clears the air on heel striking. Uh, stay tuned for more videos to come. Thanks for watching.